In this pre-algebra video, chapter 2, lesson 3, we're going to talk about writing two-step equations of our own. In the last section, we talked about solving them. Now we're going to talk about how to set them up for ourselves if they're not already given to us. Our objective is, as the student, I can write two-step equations that represent real-world situations because I will translate them carefully and I'll stick to the order of operations. You'll see what I mean as, I, as we do some examples. Now, anytime you're translating a uh, an algebraic sentence, or you're translating a verbal sentence, or even a word problem. There's some general steps you're going to follow. Those general steps are below. Your first step is when looking at the words. So specifically, if you're looking at a simple example like this, where it literally says four more than twice a number. Now those are the words. So in the instructions, I say trim it down to just ne just the necessary words. Questions like this, it pretty much already is trimmed down for you. So. Oh, wrong slide. So when I say trim it down, that's when there's a lot of excess information you don't necessarily need. For example, if they're, if they're naming a location, if they're giving a color of something, things, things that you don't necessarily need. Cut out the distracting information. Figure out only what applies. And we'll do some examples of that. that that's more of a skill specifically when you're dealing with word problems um, where we're talking about actual applied situations and scenarios. But if in the beginning, we're not necessarily going to have to do too much trimming down. We're just going to be translating. Anyways, once you've done that, your second step is going to be identify, you find your variable. Identify what quantity or quantities is missing. And, um, so when I say this, I'm saying usually will be one quantity that's missing, but sometimes there might be two technically. So to identify what's missing, and once you know what's missing, assign it a letter, assign it a variable, something to hold its spot when you now are about to start describing the situation. Your third and final step is write the equation, meaning translate your verbal model, meaning your words that you just had, um, translate that into an algebraic equation. And when you translate, you're going to make sure you use your variable to represent your unknown quantity and how it relates to everything else around it. These are your general steps you're going to follow. Feel free to hit pause if you need more time to write this down. Now, so these are some of the most common used verbal phrases for different operations. These are your friends. Literally, I'm going to write, hi friends, because these are the ones you want to keep track of because they're the most common ones. So for example, a key, uh, a key giveaway that a question is about addition, the most giveaways will use the word sum, that's the most common one. But it might say, in all, total, all together, increased by, more than, combined, added to, those are your clues. And just like the most common one for subtraction is difference, the most common one for multiplication is the word product, and for dividing, quotient is usually the most common, but the word per, or out of, or ratio, all of those mean division. So you may want to write the, all of these down, or maybe you only need to write down most of them, whatever you think you need, but be honest. You're not, you don't always know all of these, so you want to be careful with them. Another clue that it's a division question is if it talks about cutting things into equal pieces, or it talks about cutting them up, or somehow splitting them equally. And then the ones that, that also sometimes are obvious, we don't always mention, but I feel it's necessary, is the equal sign. In a sentence, the equal sign usually will usually be given away by the word is or the words is the same as or just same as. Those are the type of things that we're saying is, that are using the equal sign. All right, so to give you perspective, a lifeguard perspective, what to expect in this section, this topic, there are only three types of questions I'm going to ask you. The first one is, I'm just going to ask you to translate. In other words, for example, this example, I'm just wanting you to simply turn these words into an equation. That's it. That's, that's one type of question. The next type of question is, it's an extension of the last one. I'm going to ask you to translate it into an equation. By the way, when I say translate, I'm talking about into an equation. So I might not just ask you to translate into an equation. I might also ask you to actually solve it as well. So there are going to be questions you're going to translate and solve. Those are the two types. So the third type is a combination of both of those, but it's going to be done with applied word problems, meaning questions when we're talking about, I don't know, as some students joke around, laying tile, or we're talking about actual things in real life. We're going to, and we'll do examples of that, translating them into real questions. Like if we're talking about personal trainers and their rates that they're charging people or items, when we're using specifics, we're going to translate them into a sentence, an algebraic sentence, and we're going to actually solve it. So that's the third type of question. We've been doing those all along, though, and those we've also been doing last year as well. And in fact, all of this should look a little familiar. Let's do some examples. So in this example, your instructions are just to translate. But technically, all these questions are going to say define a variable, then translate. But here's the thing. Defining a variable. Look at what's missing. It says four more than twice a number is 12. A number? 
That's almost always in these real bland questions. That's going to be your variable. So you could choose any letter you want to represent it. The, the, the book tends to choose the letter N a lot, just N, N for number since it's kind of generic, but you can use whatever you want. You can use X if you want, whatever you choose. So when you look at the solutions of these, if it's not the, quite the letter you chose, no big deal, as long as the actual operations going on are the same. Anyways, so let's stick to the key information. Four more than twice a number is 12. So first things first, I'm going to obviously indicate the numbers, four and 12. So more than Hmm. If you're not sure what more than means, check out in here. And you look if you look at the, the addition words, more than, you're going to find it. It's right there. So that means more than is, is indicating addition. So we're saying four more than something. So in other words, we're adding four to something. And what is it for more than? Twice a number. Hmm. Think about this. What does it mean to have twice a number or double a number? That means times two of that number. So that means, let's say we chose n to be our variable. I'm going to be boring like them. We're going to double n, and then we're going to add 4 to it. So that's what we're going to do in this question. We're going to take, we're going to take n, we're going to multiply it by 2, so 2n or 2 times n, and then we're going to add 4. Now, once we've added 4, it says all of that is 12. Very commonly, the word is is going to be your equal sign. So that tells us is equal to 12. So our equation that models this is 2n plus 4 equals 12. This was a type 1 question where I was just asking you to translate it. But let's say I was asking you to actually solve it. You would go ahead and use your equation skills to do so. Now, I respect you can solve, you, you've gotten a problem solving a lot of these two-step equations. So we're going to spend most of our time focusing on translating them. And then for help with tran for solving them, focus on what we did in the last section. So take a look at this example. If you think you already understand how to do this one, press pause. See if you can interpret this one. It says 5 less than, so that tells us we're going to take something and subtract 5 from it. That's what that means. It says, but it's less than the quotient of a number and 3. So in other words, it's saying less than the quotient, meaning we have to do the quotient first. The quotient comes first, and the order they say the quotient is what you do. It says a number. Well, I'm going to be boring again. I'm just going to use, uh, no, I'll use x this time. So x will be my number. I really shouldn't do it on top of that. It's going to get messy. So... I'm going to say x. So the quotient of x and 3, that means x divided by 3. Just like if they had said the difference of a number in 3, the order they say it in. If they had said the difference of a number in 3, we would have done x minus 3. But they're saying quotient. So the quotient of a number in 3, x over 3, is negative 7. But it says 5 less than this. So that means we need to take that 5 less than. That means we're going to say subtract 5 because it's going to be 5 less than that quotient, meaning take this quotient first and then take away 5. And it says all that is negative 7, so equals negative 7. They may actually use the words and say negative 7. So this is how you would translate this one in, into an equation. And just, and just to make sure you're fresh, maybe take a moment to make sure you can solve it. So for those curious, the answer to this one would be negative 6 if you were to solve. But right now, like I said, we're going to focus on translating. All right, let's take a look at this example. The difference between twice a number and 11 is negative 23. You try this one. You hit pause and give this one a shot. And by the way, I want you to translate it and solve. So you try. Hit pause. Okay. So it says the difference between twice a number and 11, meaning notice difference. If you don't remember what difference is, go back to our table. Difference is under subtraction. Here's difference right here at the top. So the difference between twice a number and 11. So, but here's the thing, twice a number. That means we can't do the difference yet. That means we need a double. We need to time something by two first. So if we use x to represent our number again, we have to double it first. So that's so our goal is we have to do two times x first. So because that's our twice our number. So the twice a number, that right there just came two x. Now we can do the difference that they're talking about. And remember, when you do difference, it goes in the order. So twice the number goes first, that and 11, meaning it's minus 11. So the order that they give you the things, and, and when they say difference or quotient, that's specifically how you write it. And it says, is negative 23. So equal sign, negative 23. So this right here is how you would write, translate this verbal sentence into this algebraic sentence. Now take a moment to make sure you can solve it. And as long as you do your steps properly, you should end up with x equals negative 6. Was it negative 6 in our last example too? That was not on purpose, truly. Coincidence. Really. No, seriously. 
All right, so in this example, I want you to try it first, but we'll read it together, then I'll give you a hint. Your question is, um, your a situation could be something like this. A rectangular table has a width of 6 feet and a perimeter of 26 feet. What is the length? Now, the hint I'll give you is I'll first remind you how to find the perimeter of a rectangle. The perimeter of a rectangle essentially is at all four sides together, but two of your sides will be your length, so your two lengths, you, you'll have a length, you'll add it twice, and then your width, you'll add it twice, so there will be two equal sides. So if you take your length and either do length plus length plus width plus width, that's great and all, or you can say two times length plus two times the width. That will give you the perimeter. So hit pause. Try this question. Hit pause. All right. So when you're going through this, let's now interpret what we have in this question and let's put it together. So first thing it says is it has a width of six feet. So again, if you didn't know the perimeter form with the rectangle, you're welcome to look it up or you could have just thought about it. So if the width of it is six feet, that means we, we can model this situation because we understand what a rect rectangle is by doing this. So we're going to change that width to six. And as we said earlier, we know in the formula for the perimeter, it's going to be multiplied by two. But if you didn't like that, you're welcome to just do 6 plus 6. You would get the same answer. Now, we are told we actually know the perimeter. It said the, the perimeter is 26 feet. So we have 26 out here where the perimeter goes. We just do not know what the length is. So in this question, if you need to define, a, define the variable, you start by saying, let L represent the length of the table. You would write that, literally, L equals length of the table. So we're going to say 2 times L. And then we're going to add those together because that's what we came up with with our formula. But now, even if you didn't have that formula, again, you could have just figured this out by doing uh, 6 plus 6 plus L plus L equals 26. You still could have done it without knowing the actual formula. You could have just simply added all the sides together. Anyways, now you have it set up, make sure you can solve it. Press pause if you haven't done so, if you need to solve it so. And go ahead and solve it down. Now, here's what I also want you to do. I don't want you to just say 7 or L equals 7. Be specific. We were solving a word problem here. You wouldn't say the answer to someone's question was 7. You're going to say the answer is it's going to have a length of 7 feet. That's how you put this together. So length of 7 feet. The table has a length of 7 feet. That's the complete answer to this question. All right, we'll make this our last example. This will be, you're going to try this one and just, I made up an alien question. So here's your question. Hit pause once I've finished explaining it, uh, reading it for you. There's a party. It's an intergalactic meeting of aliens. Um, and so you've got two types of aliens that are here. You have Zerks, and Zerks have four legs. You also have Toits, and Toits are known because they have three legs. Now, here's what you also know. In the word problem or in the story, you observe there are 17 Zerks at this party. And then you're also told or informed that there are 104 feet on the dance floor, meaning 104 legs. The question says, how many toits do you have? So I want you to give this question a shot. Start by going through the steps. Um, I've already kind of pretty much trimmed down to the necessary words, but identify your variable and then try to translate into a sentence. So press pause and try this one. All right, so how many toits? Them asking how many toits that implies that's what you don't know. That's what you're looking for. So your unknown is how many toits you have. So here's what we're going to do. We know that every toit has three legs. So the number of toits times three will tell us how many legs in the room are toit legs, essentially, is what that's going to tell us. So that means we but first define a variable. So our first step would be we would say let t equal the number of toits. That's what t is going to represent in our equation. So t is going to represent the number of toits. We just said three times the number of toits. I should be using red for the T. That is going to tell us how many legs are toit legs. Now, obviously, if you have other people, they're going to add to the amount of legs in the room. Well, so I gave it away. Add, so you're going to increase. So add to that your zerks. Every zerk has four legs. So that means four times the number of zerks. And so I'm just going to use Z to help represent zerks in this case. Oh, except, I'm sorry, we know how many Zerks go there. So we could put a Z there and then plug it in later, but we know how many Zerks are at the party. There's 104 Zerks at the party. So four legs times um, 100, oh, I'm sorry, 104 feet. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a break. Hit pause. I mistakenly said there were 104. I meant 17. There are 17 Zerks in there at the party. So that means 17 times the number, um, times the number of legs per Zerk. Since we know the number, every Zerk has four legs, we're going to say four times the number of Zerks. Well, the number of Zerks is 17, so we already know that. You could put a Z there and then plug it in, or you can do it like that. 
So let's see what we've got here. We've got three, t three legs times the number of toits, and then we've got four legs times the number of zerks, and now we're going to use the last bit of the information. There are 104 feet on this dance floor, so 104 feet. So here we go. This is your equation to help you model this situation. And go ahead and solve it as well if you haven't done so already. Solve all the way down, you get t equals 12. Remember, don't just say 12. You're going to say there are 12 toits at this party. All right, guys, so we've now done some examples of translating, just sentences. We've solved some of those. We've also done some examples, some word problems of writing our own equations. Make sure your notes are complete. Make sure you're prepared. Take care.